What's up guys and welcome back to Mon Inc. If you guys are new here then what is up? My name is Erica. Hey ya! How you doing? And if you're into the history of the ancient Greeks and the Romans, maybe you're just into the mythology and maybe, maybe you've just been following me on Instagram and you see that I read a lot and you're like, okay, maybe I should actually like watch one of these reviews instead of just like watching all of her stupid little videos about it. Then this is the video for you, but this is also the channel for you because you'll be able to see the whole spectrum of my thoughts when I read. Woohoo! So if that sounds like you, you're gonna wanna hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so that you know every single time I post in the future. But onto the topic of today's video, as you can see from the title, we're going to be reviewing Daughters of Sparta by Claire Haywood. Now this, much like all the books that I review on this channel, it's usually because someone, like one of my friends, posted about it and they were like, oh my god, I love this. And the person who actually totally inspired me to go and buy this book and read it is Unexpected Learning Journey. I adore that profile. Lorna is an absolute sweetheart. So if you guys want more like book recs and all that sort of stuff, um, you should definitely go and follow her and check out her account because that is the sole reason as to why I bought this book and why I read it. So why don't we just dive into the video, I'll tell you the plot of the book, and then I'll tell you my own thoughts as a classicist as to what I thought and if you guys can learn from it. So Daughters of Sparta follows uh, the story of Helen and Clytemnestra, so Helen of Troy, like that one, and her sister Clytemnestra, because you know, I find that a lot of people, including me, we forget to mention that Clytemnestra and Helen are technically sisters, so Clytemnestra is Agamemnon's wife, who famously killed him in the tub, right, that thing. And they're actually sisters, so they grew up together and everything before they like married off in the various ways. And I definitely fall into that category of I just forget to mention it because they very rarely, I'm trying to think of one actually, where they are written like in mythology, they're never written together. Like their stories are never told together. Sort of like how I mentioned that with um, Ariadne and Phaedra in Jennifer Saint's book. And that is something that she brings up a lot too. There are constantly these sisters in mythology who are never ever written in the same myth, which is really bizarre. Like you have references to them and references to them being sisters, but they're never in the same room. So it was very interesting that that was sort of the, the take that Hayward went with when writing this book, that you alternate from chapters in Helen's point of view to then Clytemnestra's point of view. And even though the beginning of the book, it starts off with them as kids. So it starts off with them uh, playing about together and growing up together. And then as the narrative diverges, it's then Helen in, well, Sparta first and then in Troy. And then it follows uh, Clytemnestra in Mycenae. I nearly forgot Mycenae. I literally did think about that so hard for a second. I was like, oh my God, where the hell does Clytemnestra live? It's okay, happens to the best of us. So where Helen's narrative is concerned, we start off with her, first of all, being like abducted by Theseus because he does that. So we start off with that. She then marries Menelaus, then goes to Troy with Paris. And then it's the Trojan War from inside uh, the Trojan like walls, inside the walls of Troy. That's a much better way of saying it. So that sort of narrative that then unfolds and, and the Greeks coming in and winning, because as we all know, they popped out of the horse. And if you didn't know that, I just ruined it for you. But hopefully you knew that after like 2000 years, but either way. That's Helen's story. Meanwhile, Clytemnestra, uh, her story follows her being married off to Agamemnon, the kids that she has. And it sort of starts with, um, with you know, the Trojan War and all of that. So that's sort of where their narratives are the same, but from two different points of view. And then when Agamemnon comes home, Clytemnestra's story continues um, after that. But that's really it. That's really sort of how the story digresses. That's what the story follows. It's really the women's point of view of all of these very, very famous uh, moments from mythology and from legend, and just how they're viewing the situation rather than us getting it from uh, a playwright or whatever. Now, this book, actually, I think you can learn a lot from. Okay, let's just dive into that. But I think you guys can learn a lot from this book because Hayward sticks so closely to the original mythology. Like there are so many moments in this where I was reading it and I tabbed it being like, well, that's Iliad book three. Like that's Iliad book six. Like there are lots of direct callbacks to Homer, lots of direct callbacks to um, Aeschylus, who wrote the Oresteia. What just happened to my hair? That was so rude. Oh my God. Like I was saying, callbacks to Aeschylus. Uh, we have a number of nods to the ancient world. And I mean, Hayward is literally a classicist, like in the back, they tell you her little profile and I was reading it like, oh my God, should I be reviewing her book? I feel like I don't have a leg to stand on reviewing this woman's book because she is so accomplished and so smart. So it's no doubt that this book is fantastic. And I think that actually, this is a really good book for people who don't know the Battle of Troy and who aren't watching my Iliad series, which like fair enough, because it's a lot of um, war scenes and stuff, which I enjoy, lots of people don't. So if you're not watching that, if you're not really engaging with Homer and with the Battle of Troy, and maybe you just watch the movie Troy, which is trash, and you're like, oh, maybe I should know a bit more. Maybe I should try and dive into the ancient text. This is a really good step in that direction because it's a much more compelling story, I think, for a modern audience because it is more so 
uh, character driven, whereas these other, I wouldn't say the ancient sources are really character driven, they're more so story driven and the characters are just sort of accessories to the myth that people would have known. So I think this does it in a way that is much better for the modern audience, where we really get to know Helen, we really get to know Clytemnestra, whether we agree with their decisions um, or not. The only thing I will say to you guys, which is not a classical problem, it's just something to remember, is that Hayward is telling a much more mortal story. She's telling a much more human story. So the gods aren't mentioned. We don't really have any of these like direct uh, godly interventions and all that sort of stuff, which is fine. But just bear in mind when you read it, that when you read Homer, for example, if you want to read the Iliad and, and know some more about like the battles that she's directly referring to, there are literally times when the characters meet on the battlefield and I'm like, I know that exact passage where that came from. So all of those times, just bear in mind there was actually like a god that would swoop in. They have the fight between Paris and Menelaus and Aphrodite doesn't swoop in in the book, but she does in the ancient sources. So just bear that in mind, this is a very human story. Nothing wrong with that whatsoever. So if you want to read a book that is like, well, let's talk about Aphrodite and let's talk about Zeus and whatever, not the book, but it is a very, very good book in regards to just knowing the plot of sort of what happens and, and what these women have to go through. I mean, I really enjoyed this book. As you guys can see from all of my tabs, check it out. Once again, the color means nothing. It just means that I ran out of a certain color and, and then was stuck and so had to had to really make do with what I had. So I have all of these ones, and then I have all of these in the side. When I have tabs in the side, it just means that there were scenes that I like, and as you can see, I really vibed with a lot of them, because a lot of them are direct, direct links to the ancient sources. So you guys can learn a lot from this. You guys really can. It's so enjoyable. And even if you don't know mythology, it doesn't impact the story because the way that she tells it, she's not thinking, Hayward isn't thinking that any of you guys know the story. Like she's telling it to you for the first time. And with that being said, I think it's definitely a great book for you guys to pick up. It only just came out. Literally, I think it came out. When did this come out? I mean, it was literally like a month ago. Like, I'm not even joking. And obviously it doesn't tell me the exact date, but it literally came out like a month ago. So if you guys want to hop on something that's new, something that's fresh, I definitely recommend that you buy Daughters of Sparta by Claire Haywood. So can you learn from it? Check. Is it enjoyable? Check. Is it close to the ancient sources? I'm so Absolutely. Definitely a great review here. 10 out of 10, not an official rating system. That's just me sort of being like, yeah, let me gas Claire Haywood up. So I have left all of the links in the description below. As per normal, you have the Goodreads down there so you can see what other people are saying as well. I think the general reception is like mine, that everybody seems to really like it because it is just, it's just a story. You don't really have to know any backstory to it, which I, I really like. And I love books like this and I love recommending books like this to you guys because it means that slowly you'll be able to build on that. So once you kind of kind of know how the Trojan War sort of like went, like through this book, then you can read, you can sort of, you can sort of start moving into reading the ancient sources. And that's, that's the whole point of this channel. We want to get you in there. So you can check out the reviews down there. You can also check out my personal review, which is on Moan's website, which is www.moaninc.co.uk. Also, if you guys didn't know, this is not on the topic of the book, but I now have a red bubble because I had so many questions about people wanting merch. So you guys can check out my red bubble. I just moved the table. I have no clue if you guys heard that, but if you did, so sorry. But you guys can check out my red bubble so you can buy some merch from down there. And also buy the book whilst you're down there. You guys can check out all the links to the Amazon, the the everything else, all other sites basically that I can find. Waterstones, all the sort of shebang. It is down in the description below. Basically, basically just check out the description below because I have <laughs> loads of links down there. I really do write so much in that description and I don't know if anybody reads it or if anybody clicks any of the links, but every single piece of information that you could possibly want is down there. So would recommend. Anyways, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you guys enjoyed the book as much as I did and we will be seeing you next time here on the channel with more videos. So we'll see you then.